I noticed my fiancé started acting weird and refused living together so I snooped her phone and was rooted to the spot when found out she is living a double life. She has another name, two kids and a husband. Five months ago, I met this great woman at a bar. She was with her friends and I bought drinks for all of them and struck up conversation with her. We hit it off instantly and I took her home that night and had mind-blowing sex. She didn't stay the night, though, saying she had to get up early for work. Over the next five months we've had an awesome relationship. We went on some nice dates and had sex at least three times a week. She only stayed the night very rarely, but I didn't think much of this as she did indeed have to get up early. Anytime I tried to suggest possibly living together she said she wasn't ready for that yet. Understandable. We did hang out at her place a few times but just like her staying the night, it was very rare. I just chalked this up to her feeling more comfortable at my apartment since it was cozier. Silly need to not question why an apparently single woman lived in a big house. I have Facebook but I don't use it or any other social media. I think it's a waste of time and she told me she doesn't use it either. Well last week I decided to mess around on Facebook for a bit and found her profile seeing as we have two mutual friends, really just acquaintances for me. This is where it gets weird. Her name was totally different from what I had known her as. She's seemingly happily married and has two kids around ages 3 and 6. She posts a ton of pictures of her and her husband doing all sorts of coolie stuff so I doubt they're separated or going through a divorce. She has never told me any of this. I figured out pretty quick that I was the other man and honestly, I feel physically ill knowing that. I have a visceral hatred for cheaters and I feel just gross that I've done this. I feel so stupid that I never figured this out earlier, either I'm just an idiot or she hid this masterfully, maybe both. She never once mentioned being married with children, saying that she was single. Even when I went to her house, I didn't see any family pictures or any traces of her family. This which actually made the effort to hide any indications that she was married and had kids. I feel sick just typing this. I haven't contacted her since I found out, with the excuse that I need to focus on my job for a bit. She was cool with it, still sends some explicit photos and zexts and how eager she is to see me again. I responded half-heartedly but only to stop her from getting suspicious. God I feel nauseous. I'm going to tell her husband. This is just so wrong and it hurts me to know that this man is being deceived by his terrible wife. This hits close to home since my aunt pulled this crap on my uncle and he is the kindest man alive. Thankfully I have a habit of not deleting any texts manually so I still have the majority of our texts. I screenshotted everything so I could show them to her husband. I want to figure out a way to meet him in person but I feel like he's going to tell his wife oh hey honey some guy named other man problems asked me to meet him for coffee and that will allow her to shovel some BS down this throat. From his Facebook I found out where he works so I'm thinking I could try and catch him shortly after he leaves. I plan to divulge all details of the affair, give him all the screenshots, and for my own safety, explain that I had no idea she was married. I don't know if proof of infidelity will help him out but I feel like it's the least I can do. I'm still sickened that she could lie to her family like this so I hope she gets what's coming to her. Some of you might suggest that he has a fetish or maybe they have an open relationship or some garbage like that. Really, what are the chances? Besides, if he really did have a fetish, I'm sure she would have either mentioned it or took pics videos of us having sex so she could show it to him, or maybe even have sex in his presence. And if they were in an open relationship, I'm certain she would have told me that. No, I'm pretty sure she's cheating on her husband. So what should I do? Should I try and request to meet up online? Or should I try and find him in person? To those of you who might recommend telling her either you tell him or I will, hell no. I'm not gonna give her an opportunity to weave some bullcrap tale of how she had an emotional affair with me, moment of weakness, or some crap. And to those of you who champion breaking up with her and just staying out of it entirely, GTFO. I'm not going to let her continue to lie to and betray him under the excuse that it's not my problem anymore. I'm not a crappy person, I won't give her a free pass for cheating. Update. Currently typing this from my hospital bed because he beat the crap out of me. Just kidding. Some posters tried to tell me not to tell him but duck that. 
Most of you told me to go through with it but through email letter basically without physical interaction. Even though it was a massive risk, I thought it would be better for me to explain this crap to him in person so I decided to meet him. I called work explaining I'd be late and then drove over to his workplace around 7.20 am. Then I just went inside and waited in the lobby, watching the door for him to appear. He came in around 8 am and immediately I walked up to him, told him my name I have something important to tell him, and asked if he could meet me after work at a nearby Starbucks. He was perplexed but I convinced him that it's very important and told him not to tell anyone. He agreed, thankfully. So then I went to my job and went about the day as usual. At 5.30 I was waiting at Starbucks and he came in shortly after. Then the conversation began. I explained to him that what I was gonna say would crush him and I requested a chance to say my piece without interruption. He allowed this so I told him everything. About how I met his wife, how she used a fake name, the five-month affair, the lengths she went to conceal it, everything. For my own safety, I emphasized how I didn't know she was married, how I found out about her secret, and how I decided to tell him as soon as I found out. I then handed him a folder containing all of the screenshots. He looked through all of it and then just stared at his coffee in total silence for a minute or two. He then replied, firstly thanking me for coming to him with this information and for doing the right thing. He said if he were in my position he would have done the same thing. Then he told me how he had suspected his wife was cheating but then his wife lied to him, assuring him nothing was going on. Then for the next 10 minutes he asked questions about the affair, like about the dates we went on, the zex, she never did this kind of zex with him but did it often with me, the conversations we had, etc. I told him the complete truth. By the end of this he was enraged but didn't attack me or anything. Instead he thanked me once more for telling him and told me I'm a good man. Then he said that although he appreciates me telling him, he told me never to contact him again for obvious reasons. I totally understood and was cool with it. At this point he was getting up to leave so I asked him what he plans to do. He said he would definitely divorce her and that the screenshots would help him out since they apparently have an infidelity clause in their prenup, she cheated on him at the early stages of their relationship. I was elated to hear this, wished him the best of luck, and we parted ways. I paid for his coffee. So there it is. Thankfully I escaped unharmed. No injuries, no wounds, nothing. I deleted the cheating witch's number and cleared my phone of all traces of this crap storm. I'm proud of what I did and I pray that the cheating bitch faces harsh justice. Cheating wife who lied on polygraph hoped to get marriage counseling, got divorce served instead. I found that my wife is cheating with a high school friend she reconnected with a couple of weeks ago. I have the full log of text messages between them in all its sordid detail. In these messages, it appears clear that they hooked up at least three times. Not only that, but she is bragging about having sex with this guy to two of her friends. I confronted her and she broke down crying and started telling me that it was just an online-only fantasy. She tells me that I drove her to this because I didn't give her enough attention and that she was desperate. It's true, we haven't had sex very frequently lately because I have a relatively low libido, to begin with, I am full of resentment at the fact that I do 90% of the housework and childcare, and the fact that I haven't slept in the bed for a couple of years because she likes to co-sleep with the kids. I guess I am culpable. Apparently, I made her do this. She also says she stuck with me through all the things I have done in the past. I was not very good with money for a while and overspent forcing her to borrow money from her dad, I had a brief period where I questioned my sexuality, and I have been a frequent user of triple X video. Are these things equivalently odious? Should I allow myself to be guilt into staying in this marriage like this? Anyway, through all this I have no photos of them together so I guess I can't definitively prove anything, yet the texts appear to be clear about what happened despite her insistence that they are just fantasies. I start to relent and give her what she wants. I suggest maybe we need to see someone to help sort through these problems. We did counseling in the past, but I am not a very emotionally open guy and had a hard time talking, but she also resisted the counselor whenever he pushed back against her. She wanted him to fix me and didn't take kindly to being told that she might have a role to play in our difficulties too. 
so after we conclude this discussion, with her steamrolling me, and offering to let me text her AP and friend for more info, I come to find out later from her text messages that she was texting both her AP and one of her friends to see if they would cover for her and tell me it was fantasy only. LOL. I printed every text message she sent him. Why would she use text to contact someone to arrange cover? Good grief. I haven't confronted her yet about this. But it sure doesn't bode well for any reconciliation. We tried to have some makeup sex after, but before I read her attempts at covering things up, but I had a hard time maintaining an erection and couldn't finish because I kept thinking about the things said in the messages. I don't know about reconciliation. I was all set to leave her and then the crocodile tears got to me. But this new revelation of cover stories opens it all up again. I don't know what to do anymore. She makes more than I do, we have a house, kids, etc. And being a very involved parent, I need to have my kids at least 50 fiftieths. I am afraid that my low paying job will hinder that as a possibility. Any advice? Thanks for reading. Update. Unfortunately, I realize now that I may have jumped the gun in confronting her as I have nothing other than text messages to prove her cheating on me. I have nothing that catches her in flagrante delecto, exactly, although to my mind the texts are absolutely clear on what happened. They also show her running cover with her friends and admissions of an affair, etc. But nonetheless, she is doubling down on her story that no physical contact occurred. I have no pictures. She has gone so far as to offer to take a polygraph to prove her story. Enter the voice recorder. Oh, how I wish I had one of these a week or two ago. Anyway, on Friday she thought all was well and went over to AP's place. I slipped the recorder in her purse and overheard their conversation. They didn't have sex, but she said to him it was a lot of fun and outlined her strategy to use marriage counseling as a way to push for an open relationship. She also said that she would do it again if she gets a chance and propositioned him just before leaving. The next day I told her I wanted a divorce. She doubled down on her story and wouldn't let me go saying that you're just going to throw 10 years of marriage away. Excuse me, no, you threw 10 years of marriage away. She went over to his house again today to drop something off, no contact right, and again got even more admissions of Zex. This time also, she outlined her strategy with the polygraph. According to the polygraph people, you can submit your own questions. Her story relies on the fact that other people were present when they met. Okay, probably true. So she is going to write questions along those lines to prove her story. But really, who cares if other people were present? AP has other rooms in his house, doesn't he? I wonder if it is worth letting her proceed with the polygraph, but insist that I be the one who writes the questions? Or really is it even worth it? I probably have enough and should just run off to a lawyer. But I kind of want to see her waste $600. Is that petty? LOL. She thinks she can get around this by doing the polygraph and booking marriage counseling. She bought a book yesterday called His Needs, Her Needs, or something like that and is insisting we read it together. What an infuriating book. It reads like no one has a choice but to fall into an affair. She keeps coming to me with passages that read like it is an inevitability. Too bad she didn't buy this book before she decided to duck someone else. This book is a weapon in the hands of the W.S. Thanks for your responses to my previous post. The advice, support, and even the kicks to the nuts are all well appreciated. Update My wife went to see her doctor today. When I got home she told me she told the doctor her story. She told me that the doctor agrees with her that she had no choice but to do what she did and that she shouldn't take any blame for her actions. She also told her doc that I have been talking to my dad about this affair. Her doctor, apparently, thinks that I was wrong to do so. But what the duck? This is my goddamn dad. I have one friend in this town and he is supportive generally but not terribly profound who the duck else am I supposed to talk to? I can't turn around here without bumping into someone that doesn't know all of my dirty laundry since my wife has always been fond of offloading all of her relationship problems with her friends and she knows this bothers me. 
We had this argument a few years ago where she was talking to friends, including mutual friends about her problems with me. It got to the point where I was embarrassed to be around my friends since they seemed to know everything going on, from my wife's point of view of course. And the minimizing of my feelings continues. She says oh don't be angry, just calm down, just get over it. God damn it I am so ducking angry right now I am shaking. This is a whole new level of manipulation. Livid. Update. So I had a sneaking suspicion that my WS would use this, her last opportunity to stray before going back into work, work from home previously, full time next week, plus the fact that AP usually is Friday off, to have another meet up with her AP. And duck me sideways, but I was right. Despite her protestations that she wants to reconcile she has continued contact with her AP and contacted him to meet today at lunch. He shut her down and said it would be a bad idea. Now she is upset that she is being rejected by two men. I just can't even believe what's going on here. But before any of you proceed to call me a doormat, my resolve was firm yesterday, but only strengthened today. I will meet with lawyers next week. Not sure whether to even bother confronting her with this. I just have no hope left. Remember for those considering reconciliation, trust, but verify. Final update. I have had a few people ask for an update, so I thought I would post one here, despite the fact you will probably all rake me over the coals for being unassertive, etc. Anyway, my STBXW continues to deny any physical involvement with AP. She is doubling down on her story. The day we got the polygraph and I called bullcrap, she decided to take the kids for a couple of hours and texted me calling me a ducking a-hole and told me that I took the kids so you could see what it is like to be without your family. Thanks, really nice. Already weaponizing the children. Keep in mind too that throughout all this, I have yet to swear at her, yell at her, and call her names. She has now down all three. And to top it off, I grey rocked her for a week or so and slept in the basement. In response to this, she started to say that I was treating her horribly. I mean really? I was giving her the cold shoulder and not giving her any attention, and yet she continues to blame me for everything, lies to me, turns me into the butt of all jokes at her workplace, and I'm the one treating her horribly? Indeed. She was still in constant contact with AP until last Friday. Even in the text to inform him she would not be contacting him she qualified it by saying for a while. No, this is not for a while this is permanent. She just does not get it. Her claim all along is that this was strictly online and that because online, not a relationship. Really? Not a relationship? She has a personal history with this guy, she met up with him three times, but because most of it was via text, there is no relationship. She even goes on Facebook on Friday and posts something to the effect that you don't realize how important someone is until you can't talk to them anymore. Somehow I don't think she is talking about me. I found out today that she is telling her friends she misses him so badly. Funny that she would say that if it was not a relationship. Her co-workers are also looking for other ways to get her in contact with him, via email, or some other means. Definitely not over. Last week I also got an admission from her, via a co-worker, that she was indeed lying on the polygraph. She said, well actually I was lying, I'm pretty good, I could be a criminal, I should rob a bank, I would pass the test. She also admitted to taking so much of her co-worker's lorazepam that she doesn't even remember the drive back to work that day. I also heard that she has been saying that AP wants to do it again, she wants to do it again. She seems to have an obsession with his truck and so badly wants to go for a ride in it. They never got a chance before I broke up the fun, but clearly, it is still on her mind. But apparently, he is such a sweet guy that he wants us to fix up our marriage first. She wrote me a sob story of a letter in which she once again pinned all blame on me, and even said that I would really like AP, he's a real cool guy. Indeed. I would like to see him spit his teeth out on the floor. I stopped reading. I left my ring on the bathroom counter last week and she came home and found it. She came and badgered me for an hour while I was cooking supper and eventually I relented and put it back on. She came home Friday in tears after I texted her about how this was affecting me. She is, I think, maybe, starting to realize the crap she has caused and finally acknowledged my feelings. 
I softened, again, but I also haven't really changed my mind. I just want the argument to end, and I just am not assertive enough to say enough is enough, just duck off. So I went for a three-hour walk and started to let her back in a little. I also agreed to marriage counseling this week. I don't want to go. Since I started to let her in a little she has once again started to invalidate my feelings and try to get me to agree with her that what she did does not constitute a relationship, etc. If I would just do that, I would feel less stressed. It's just that simple. I had a really good session with a therapist last week who works in the same office where we are taking our marriage counseling. She was very affirmative and thinks that I should trust my gut on this one. She stopped short of advocating for divorce, saying that it's my choice, but also said that I deserve better. Pretty sure I understand her subtext. MC will be with a different therapist, but in the same office, so this gives me some hope that they might be more or less on the same page and will push back against my STBXW a little. I know her primary agenda is to push for an open marriage. I guess through MC, I hope to present the whole story of what happened and hope to reiterate my desire to divorce. Perhaps having someone else there will help to embolden me and bolster my position. I don't know though, taking a bit of a risk there, I think, given the fact I know most of you seem to disagree with MC under the circumstances. I do have a lawyer on retainer. Unfortunately, it is a slow process so far. He has advised starting with a mutually agreed separation agreement as it tends to be a less conflictual and litigious process over straight-up filing. I know this will disappoint some of you, and me, frankly, that there may be a dramatic serving of papers in the workplace, but I, as a relatively low-income earner, and with three kids, am inclined to agree with his advice, at least for now, and depending on what her response is, and the type of lawyer she decides to select. I am in the process of gathering the necessary documents for him to get started on this. In the meantime, I am a little less of a wreck than I was a week ago. Some of the initial shock and anxiety are wearing off. It is, however, coming back since I stopped with the grey rock bit this week. Every time I get near her, I start getting anxious and just disgusted. I can't stand to be around her so I have been taking a lot of walks in the evenings and I'm glad to be back to work after the weekend. Having trouble sleeping next to her too, especially since she has started to bug me for Zex already. Nope, sorry, not doing that. Having some real trouble with self-worth and suicidal ideation that is really scaring me too. I couldn't do that to my kids, but at the same time, my front tires are bald and I keep hoping for a blowout followed by a fiery crash on the highway to work. I'm ducking miserable, and she is continuing on more or less like nothing ever happened. Disgusting. That's it for now, I suppose. Perhaps I will have another update after MC this week. I'm sure that will be a craps how. Thanks for reading and your past support. By all means, call me what you will, I need it. Edit, I thought I would add a few words since the thread got locked before I got a chance to respond to any comments. I want to say thank you. I expected, indeed even hoped, for some harsh words, and I was not disappointed. I will use these to steal myself for tomorrow night's craps how. As to the kids, I know all of this and fully agree that coming from a broken home is to be preferred to living in one. Thankfully, so far there have not been any big blowouts inside the home or in front of the kids. The younger two are completely oblivious, 8, 5, although I am sure they can pick up on my mood to some extent. My oldest knows something is going on. In fact, when the kids were out with STBXW, when she scooped them last week and told me she wanted me to see what it would be like without my family, he asked her if we were going to divorce. She said no. She does not, of course, want a divorce. Clearly, she doesn't care about her reputation among her co-workers, as they all know. But her family is quite another story. Found out my wife cheated on me and my kid isn't mine. I posted for help originally in the other relationship subreddit. However shortly after my post was deleted and locked, and they never explained why they removed it. They said it was locked because it had over a 100 comments but never explained the deletion. I am hoping you guys can help me out. I posted almost two years ago previously. At the time I discovered that my wife lied to me about the nature of her affair. She initially told me it was just her developing a crush and texting, 
but I later found out through her email address that it was in fact a physical affair. And this is the follow-up post. Hello everyone I wanted to share with you what has happened since discovering the details of my ex-wife's affair it has almost been two years since I came to you guys for help. I wish there was a happy story at the end of all of this, but things only got worse. A lot of people contacted me after I initially posted. In my heart I knew that a divorce was the best option much of my posting was mainly to see what the other side would be. However a group of you guys also suggested that this isn't the first time my wife cheated either, and just to check all of my bases to go get a paternity test. At the time I thought it was crazy, there were times when I questioned that why doesn't my daughter look more like me. I kept telling myself hey she is a girl, plus she when she gets older. I couldn't shake the insecurity anymore, and I went ahead and got a paternity test done. I found out that my daughter is not my daughter. I didn't know what to do, I don't think I ever felt as low in my life as I did after discovering that. I finally did what needed to be done I contacted a lawyer, I told him my situation. He told me what my role in everything was, and how to behave the coming months. We hoped to get everything taken care of before court, however my wife insisted that I pay child support, because the other guy disappeared as she put it. My lawyer contacted the guy, and he said he wanted to step up being the father. However, despite all of this the judge refused, since the other guy had pills problems, and said that I would be best suited as the father. My ex-wife won in the divorce, the show now has the house which I have to pay for. There is a stipulation that I can control who enters the house, since I am the owner, I only get money if my ex-wife sells the house. And I did end up seeing that her lover, from the affair, was at the house, and I contacted the state however, they never got back to us. So now, my ex-wife lives in the house with her lover, I have to pay $788 per month for a child that isn't mine, plus $1,400 for a mortgage in a house I don't get to live in. After car payments, taxes, I barely have anything. My mother is sick, and my dad passed away last year. And I really don't know what to do. The only people in my life that I could fall back on for help I am losing.